Good morning in the Netherlands. Good afternoon in Bangladesh. My name is um, I work for La Riva International. I will be your host today to discuss the results of our study about the opportunities in the agriculture sector in Bangladesh. We have the pleasure today to have the ambassadors of both countries involved, the Netherlands and Bangladesh, joining our webinar. So for today, I would shortly like to go through the agenda. We have maximum 90 minutes, um, during which we will guide you through the results of our study. And um, I would like to ask you all to raise any questions you would have in the chat box. We will collect these and then uh, after presenting the results, we will address these and um, try to provide an answer to your inquiries. Um, so we first will start with uh, providing an overview of the agriculture sector in Bangladesh um, being split into the different segments of the value chain, uh, uh, starting from breeding, then going into feed, farming, and ultimately uh, processing and exports. Uh, but let me firstly address the, uh, your speakers for today. So we are honored that we have uh, Ambassador Harry Verwey, uh, Ambassador of the Netherlands in Bangladesh, joining today. Um, after this opening, I would like to give him the floor for his welcome speech. Then uh, Ambassador Rias Hamidula, uh, Ambassador of, the uh, of Bangladesh in the Netherlands, will join us uh, directly after presenting the results of this study. Um, and he will do the opening also for the Q&A session. Um, then um, my colleagues uh, Zahed Amin and uh, Saif Nasru will also be joining this event. They will also uh, present part of the results. Um, and myself, Matthias Brin of uh, Larif, uh, I will be your, uh, uh, your host for today, uh, also chairing this, uh, this webinar. Uh, before we go into details very shortly about the background of this study, um, Le Reef International, we are a Netherlands headquartered business development advisory firm, uh, which is uh, supporting companies with doing business in high growth emerging markets in Asia, Central Eastern Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. We are represented in Bangladesh via Light Castle Partners. Um, and uh, together with, with Light Castle, Le Reef conducted this assessment about the opportunities in the agriculture sector in Bangladesh. So at this moment, I would like to give the floor to His Excellency Harry Verwey, Ambassador of the Netherlands in Dhaka. Um, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Uh, let me start by thanking Larif and Lai Castle the organizers of uh, this webinar today, at the occasion of the launch of a study on the Bangladeshi aquaculture sector. And this study is commissioned by my embassy and by the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Let me also acknowledge my colleague, His, Ex His Excellency Ambassador Rias Hamidullah, with whom I share a common objective to raise mutual trade and investments between our two nations. So such a common objective is rather unique in the world of diplomacy. But in this case, it is logical. Bangladesh wants to do business in, with the Netherlands and the Netherlands wants to do business with Bangladesh. That much has become clear in my past few years as ambassador of the Netherlands in Dhaka. So Bangladesh and the Netherlands have a lot to build on as we have stood shoulder to shoulder for five decades. Since its independence 50 years ago this year, Bangladesh has come a long way towards becoming hunger and deprivation free. Today, we are two fellow Delta countries at the dawn of a new era, an era in which Bangladesh graduates from the least developed countries group, an era of mutual investment and trade, an era of opportunities. So when I speak with companies in the Netherlands, I often get the impression that they don't know much about Bangladesh. Obviously there's an image of a disaster prone country, but doing business is supposed to be incredibly different. Notwithstanding some of the challenges, the facts speak for themselves. Today, almost 170 million people 
live in a country not even four times the size of the Netherlands with an economic growth rate that, according to the World Bank, before the pandemic, outpaced China's. 25 million Bangladeshi were lifted out of poverty in the past 15 years alone. And much of that progress is expected to go on despite the impact of the pandemic. So this means a growing domestic market, market rising living standards and increasing opportunities for export. Luckily, entrepreneurs, business people are usually easily swayed by facts and figures. And that's where we aim to come in. Finding experts able to increase the available market intelligence for several sectors and exploring the opportunities for mutual visits, trade missions, and cooperation. The aquaculture sector is one of those promising sectors. The Netherlands is known for its value creation and innovation, and I feel it would be exciting to see companies come together. There are now a few opportunities in breeding, farming, feed, processing and supply chain management for an important sector that constitutes 3.5% of Bangladeshi GDP and 12% of employment. So by addressing some of the challenges in the sector, such as inefficiencies and post-harvest losses, I feel we can create a win-win situation. By strengthening the value chain for freshwater fish and shrimp that can cater to domestic and foreign markets. I feel that with the webinar of today and the study in hand, companies from the Netherlands will be able to seize a first mover advantage in this rapidly developing market in Bangladesh. This study, as well as efforts for other sectors, also marks a shift in bilateral relations between the Netherlands and Bangladesh. After 50 years of development cooperation, the graduation of Bangladesh from the LDC group marks and means that our bilateral relation focuses increasingly on mutual trade and investment. With that, we need to develop new ways of working and new networks. I am a firm believer in this knowledge-driven and sector-specific way of laying a foundation for that new way of working. I see this webinar and the study very much as a first step in a long-term engagement. I would invite you, the attendees, to think outside the box and to think of creative ideas to work on this engagement an engagement to further Dutch and Bangladeshi based business interests for the benefit of both our countries and for the benefit of our businesses, your businesses. So my team and I stand ready in Dhaka to assist Bangladeshi and Netherlands companies. And I'm confident that the same goes for Ambassador Hamidullah and his team in The Hague. So I look forward to learning more about the details of the study. Wishing you a lively discussion today and hoping to welcome all of you in Dhaka as soon as the situation allows for it. Thank you very much. Excellent. Um, thank you, uh, Ambassador Harry Farai, for your kind words and uh, also facilitating this study uh, and hopefully yeah, resulting into uh, an increase in intensification of the cooperation between the Netherlands in Bangladesh in the field of agriculture. So, uh, getting back. Yeah, presentation and before we go into the details of the, um, of the study uh, looking at the different steps of the value chain uh, I once more would like to address that you have the opportunity to raise questions in the chat box uh, we will uh, collect these and then, and then uh, providing time to answer these after having presented the results of the study furthermore I would like to inform you that we are recording this session so although we have almost 100 people joining this webinar today um, you will be able to uh, see once more the results um, of the recording, which we will distribute via YouTube. Um, so uh, let us firstly set the scene, and I would like to give the floor to my colleague uh, Zahed Amin of Light Castle, uh, elaborating on the uh, macroeconomic conditions of Bangladesh. Zahed, the floor is yours. Thank you, Matthias. Uh... Welcome everyone. Good morning to my colleagues in, in the Netherlands and, and good afternoon to my uh, to the, all the participants in Dhaka. Uh, before going into the details on, on our findings, uh, we would want to share a few things 
about the Bangladesh economy in general. Uh, although we don't get a lot of limelight, just uh, just as M Ambassador Harry was telling, uh, we have a very uh, a booming economy, if I, if I would say, over the last 20 years, uh, our economy has been growing for roughly around 6% per annum. Although uh, the COVID-19 scenario has been a dampener, but uh, we believe that we would move out of this particular uh, financial difficulties. According to the World Bank estimates, uh, our economy is expected to all, uh, expected to move uh, to the positive trajectory by growing at 3.6% uh, uh, in the year 2022. And we have grown positively despite all the lockdowns and the closure of the economy in 2020 and 21. Uh, in terms of our economic prospects, our, our uh, main strength would be the, the population. Although, although we have a very small uh, country, uh, we have a population of 170 strong, 35% of the population, 60% uh, of the population is below the age of 35, which means that we have a very large uh, uh, working population. Alongside, given the fact that we have a very young population, our consumption trends are also upward moving with rising per capita income. In the recent past, in 2019-20, our per capita income had uh, finally moved close to 2000 US dollar. And we have Bangladesh for the first time has crossed uh, the per capita GDP of India for the first time in, the, uh, in, in, in 50 years. Uh, in terms of our population, I've already mentioned that it's, it's the eighth largest population in terms, uh, eighth largest country in terms of population. We have two large cities in Dhaka and Chittagong. Uh, we also have 25 large uh, cities which are coming up, which we are calling MSC population, middle and affluent class uh, filled in population. In terms of the country's distribution, uh, there are eight divisions and which is divided into 64 districts. And according to a recent BCG study, we have seen that uh, currently almost 15% of the population are from the middle and affluent class population, and it's expected to quadruple within the year 2025. If you move on to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, just as I have mentioned, our economy has, uh, has been booming over the last 10 years. Our population, uh, population's per capita income has been growing. Uh, GDP growth has been close to 7% before the pandemic. Our economic size is around $350 billion, uh, according to the 2019 estimates. And although there are certain challenges in terms of ease of doing business, uh, government is working quite hard in terms of, of, of setting in motion the one-stop solution, one-stop ser service center uh, from the uh, Bangladesh in Investment Development Authority. And we have received around $3.2 billion of, of, of investment uh, in 2019. 2018, and we expect more FDIs in the coming years. If you move on to the next slide. Florine, next slide, please. Yeah, in terms of protein consumption, as we know, our per capita income is, is growing, it's still quite low. So per capita protein consumption is on the lower side if you do a benchmarking with the regional players or, or, or players with similar socioeconomic conditions. But the good news is our per capita protein consumption is increasing at a very, very uh, significant pace. If you look at the historic figure, we'll see that uh, per capita uh, CAGR uh, consumption rate has been around 1.6%, and it's expected to increase due to rising living standards, higher per capita income. And as we all know, uh, Bangladeshis prefer uh, fish as part of their staple diet, and fish constitutes around 60% of protein consumption uh, in Bangladesh, and it's expected to be high. And with higher aquaculture production, it's expected that uh, fisheries would be more fish, fish, uh, fish would be cheaper in the coming days and more people would be consuming fish in the future. I will hand over the mic to uh, uh, Matthias, my colleague Matthias, who will take it, uh, take on from here. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Zahat, for this uh, introduction about uh, Bangladesh. And, and, and clearly, uh, fish consumption is is important in in Bangladesh. Uh, majority uh, of the uh, protein um, consumption. So let's have a look at the agriculture sector. Um, so first of all, if we look to the total uh, production of, of fish in in Bangladesh, uh, we notice that it's almost a 4.4 million metric tons uh, market, 2018-2019 uh, figures of which over half, so 2.5 million metric tons is coming from cultivation. And so from what we name aquaculture, the remaining comes from, uh, from inland capture as well as marine uh, fisheries. 
Um, we expect uh, that this volume will increase. Uh, so the total volume of, of fish production uh, from 4.4 million metric tons towards 5.7 million metric tons in the coming three to four years. Um, this results in an average growth of over 5% per year. And, and to stipulate, uh, which was already addressed by the ambassador, huh? um, the, the agriculture fisheries industry in Bangladesh is important for its economy, uh, uh, both in terms of contribution for uh, GDP, as well as employment, uh, employing uh, approximately 12% of, of the total labor force. Uh, so we, we talk about a, a huge industry here, very important for uh, Bangladesh's economy. Uh, if we then look to the value chain in the next slides, um, what we can distinguish here is that we talk about a very fragmented value chain, uh, especially if we compare it to the regional peers in, in Asia, uh, where um, roughly each step of the value chain is, is, um, is considered to be relatively fragmented, uh, especially uh, that especially accounts for the, the farming part. Uh, we will zoom into the different steps of the value chain later in this report. Um, what furthermore um, comes out is that the, the, the production in, in Bangladesh also uh, uh, remains in Bangladesh. So only a small portion of what is produced in the agriculture fisheries segment is being exported. Uh, and, and out of this export is particularly shrimp. Um, so these are a, a, a few uh, trends we, we can already distinguish. Then looking at developments in the past uh, 12, 13 months, uh, the, the post COVID era, well clearly uh, this has uh, resulted in increased uncertainty in the market. Uh, we see price volatility resulting into um, uh, farmers uh, delaying stocking of, of, new, uh, of new harvests. Um, uh, disruptions in supply chain also resulting into uh, volatility in prices of ingredients, but also final products. So uh, overall, I would say uh, this is a uh, this has resulted to uh, to a lot of uncertainty in the markets. Um, clearly, will not be a surprise, and we see this also in other value chains in uh, in emerging markets. Um, having a look at the the aquaculture sector and especially freshwater fish in in Bangladesh. Uh, and this is roughly a 2 million metric ton uh, market, uh, of which half, uh, so over a million metric ton, is, is constituted by species of the carp uh, family. So in, in overall figures, uh, uh, panga and tilapia are the largest species, uh, but then uh, comes up a, a large number of, of farmed uh, carp species. Um, Carp is, is relatively seen as a, a bit higher value species in Bangladesh. And so its, its growth is also driven by uh, increased purchasing power of Bangladeshi uh, consumers. Whereas uh, panga and tilapia are considered as a bit lower quality fish, so a bit more affordable. Uh, uh, having said that, we, we see from growth figures that, that growth in panga and tilapia is a bit uh, declining, uh, uh, so it's still growing, but uh, in a lesser speed than, uh, than, than carp species. Um, then looking at the market for shrimp, um, that, is, that is quite a, a unique market uh, where uh, Bangladesh um, is, is a typical monodon market. Uh, during the past 10 years, we have witnessed in Asia a, a shift from, from monodon, so black tiger shrimp towards Vanamai, uh, the, the white leg shrimp. Um, and this has been the case in, in virtually each Asian market, um, yeah, but also other tropical uh, regions, uh, with, with exception for Bangladesh, uh, where cultivation of monodon is still dominant. However, um, also uh, cultivation of, uh, of Rosenbergi has been growing rapidly. Uh, and this is especially a, a species which is uh, destined for, for export markets such as China. Um, so whereas Vanamai did not really kick off in, uh, in Bangladesh yet, uh, Mondon is, is, is still a dominant species though, and declining a bit in, in actual volumes in, uh, in recent years. Um, and shrimp production is a, a highly, uh, highly uh, dispersed as a fragmented market with many uh, small-scale extensive farmers, uh, over 300,000 uh, estimated. 
So this is a bit setting the scene of the agriculture sector in, uh, in Bangladesh. Um, I would like to give the floor for the next chapter, which is the breeding chapter. Uh, my colleague Saif from Lightcastle. Saif, the floor is yours. Thank you, Matthias. Um, yeah, so like you said, we'll start over from the very first uh, segment of the value chain, which is the breeding uh, segment. If you can move to the next slide, please. Um, so in Bangladesh, there's currently a total of 1,038 registered hatcheries. And uh, these are mainly concentrated in around the farming hubs in Joshua, Bogura, Manusing, and Kamila. But there is a high dependency on, uh, on the private sector for production of uh, fish seeds. Of, of all the hatcheries, 10% are government owned and 90% are private sector owned. And this 90% of hatcheries account for more than 99% of the seed production. Uh, despite their lower production volume, seeds from government owned hatcheries are perceived to be of much better quality by farmers due to improved uh, hatchery management. And uh, overall in the sector, the quality of seeds has been seen to decline because a lot of these smaller private sector hatcheries uh, resort to some practices such as inbreeding, which leads to um, a decline in the, in the quality of progeny. There's also a lot of negative selection that is going on. And there's also a non-availability of quality breeds. So, so the common practice by some of these smaller private sector hatcheries is to collect eggs from brood stocks that are collected from the local wet markets or local uh, ponds, as opposed to importing you know, quality uh, uh, brood stocks from uh, abroad. There's also improper brood management practices and inadequate biosecurity at some of these smaller hatcheries. Uh, the good news here is that organized private sector hatcheries have stepped up with uh, better quality production. However, they have tended to focus more on tilapia and fungus uh, seed production. Uh, so there is definitely room for diversification for into other major species such as fungus, koi, and catfish by these larger organized players. Moving on to the, uh, the shrimp uh, sector's breeding uh, overview. Uh, the shrimp uh, pr uh, seed production, uh, PL production, is concentrated mostly in Cox's Bazaar and Kula Division, uh, mirroring uh, the, the farming sector. Uh, however, the shrimp sector is mostly dependent on wild-caught foods. Uh, wild caught broods of uh, Rosenberg, in fact, are, are in particular are suffering a decline, and there is a constant price in the market, and this is happening due to overfishing and overcollection of these wild broods. In 2019, the uh, production of monodon uh, PL reduced by post larva uh, reduced by 31%, and the production of Rosenberg post larva reduced by approximately 70%. This massive drop was due, was attributed to high prevalence of diseases among food stocks. So this is one of the, the negative risk factors of uh, depending on wild caught food stocks. So if there is a, a disease spreading in the wild that, that impacts the national production of, of, of shrimp. The good news here is that in, in the monodon sector, we've seen investments coming into uh, specific pathogen free or SPF hatcheries. Uh, however, uh, at present, these uh, SPF hatcheries only account for 2%, less than 2% of, of monodon post larva production. And the entirety of the Rosenbergi uh, PL production is dependent on wild caught brood stocks. The prices of the SPF, brood, uh, SPF PL are also a bit higher uh, compared to the wild caught ones. Um, and, and these are a range around uh, 1,000 taka per, uh, per 1,000 PL compared to uh, less than half that price for the, uh, for the wild caught ones. Uh, because these are sourced from wild caught brood stocks, uh, we have seen that the market is very volatile and the prices uh, constantly change in, in response to supply dynamics. Uh, so there is uh, definitely a lot of room for uh, improvement and investment into the SPF hatchery sector. I will now pass the baton over to Matthias to provide you an overview of the aqua and shrimp feed segments. Excellent, Sai. Thank you very much. And we'll come back to you later on uh, with well, the next uh, parts of the uh, study. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the feed segments. Um, so aqua feed in Bangladesh has been a, a very rapidly growing market in, uh, in recent years. Uh, altogether, uh, last financial year, representing roughly a million metric tons. Um, and what is surprised us is that it's particularly a, a market geared towards uh, fish, uh, freshwater fish farming, whereas the, uh, the shrimp segment is, is relatively small at current. Uh, it has been a, a rapidly growing market, uh, both for uh, sinking as well as floating fish feeds, 
we have seen a, a growth of roughly 6% during the past years, and is also expected to continue in the years ahead. Um, again, uh, freshwater fish aqua feed uh, represents the majority of, of the market, uh, whereas probably 60% is, is geared towards sinking and 40% is uh, applied for, for floating uh, feed. So if we go to the next slide, um, what we see is that uh, the shrimp feed is relatively small, roughly 3% of the total market. And, and uh, that, that is a result as uh, shrimp farming in Bangladesh is a quite an extensive business and with uh, a large number of, of small scale farmers um, in general having less than a hectare of, of land under cultivation. Uh, and, and shrimp feed uh, for, for shrimp purposes, shrimp farming purposes is, is still not common, although it is on the rise. Um, furthermore, we, we see that the quality of domestic produced fish feed is still relatively low compared to, uh, to Asian peers. Um, uh, in addition, uh, um, uh, Bangladesh is also importing a large extent of its, uh, of its ingredients for, for aqua feed. So if we look to the landscape of the aqua feed players, um, as mentioned, it is a relatively uh, fragmented market if we compare to, to international uh, peers. Um, looking at the total value chain, then the feed part might be the most consolidated, but still, uh, if we look to the top five players, they altogether have about 50% of the market. Uh, whereas in total, we have identified over 200 aqua feed players in Bangladesh. Um, so it is also our expectation that in the, in the next decade there will be um, a round of consolidation. Uh, uh, new market entries uh, will uh, will happen. Uh, international parties will enter the market uh, already doing so, um, and and uh, uh, parties already active in the market might join forces or uh, or, uh, uh, or consolidate. Um, the uh, market for aqua feed in, in Bangladesh is also dependent for a large extent on, on ingredients import from abroad. Um, and markets such as from South America, India are important, for example, for, for soy. Uh, and it also makes Bangladesh uh, dependent to international price fluctuations. Uh, and also has an impact on the quality of, of feed and the consistency. Uh, market leader in this segment is, is quality, uh, approximately representing 50% of the market, producing uh, over 150,000 metric tons in 2019, followed by players such as uh, Mega and uh, Nourish. Um, if we look to farming, so where is commercial feed uh, destined for? There we see that uh, Panga and Tilapia being important freshwater species are uh, also dominant in terms of commercial feed application. Um, we learned in, the, in one of the previous slides that, that carp is, uh, the different species of carp are the largest uh, species in terms of freshwater fish volume. Uh, having said, uh, um, and most of the farmers uh, cultivating carp are applying non-commercial feed. Although this segment is, is growing uh, at current, it's still particularly panga and tilapia where commercial feeds are, uh, are applied. Uh, shrimp is, is relatively small, uh, but again, also this segment is, uh, is growing. So that is shortly about the, the aqua feed market in, uh, in Bangladesh. I would again give the floor back to, to my colleague Saif, who will tell you uh, more about the farming segment. Uh, thank you, Matthias. Um, so before I dive into the farming segment, I think it's very important for people who are not familiar with the Bangladeshi market to understand that it's a very fragmented market, and it's a market, uh, and it's a, it's a production hub that's uh, dominated by small um, uh, smallholder farmers who produce in small quantities, but a numerous uh, in in uh, quantity. Um, so these farmers uh, are. Dominant in the Mymansingh, Kumilla, Joshua, and Pola districts, where uh, the production is mainly concentrated in. Uh, however, uh, if you look at, if you dive deeper into the numbers, you will see that a lot of these production hubs are in fact specialized. So, for example, Mymansingh is a major production hub for uh, fish species such as pangas uh, and koi, whereas uh, those in Joshua, uh, Kumilla, Shatkira, those areas are mostly. Uh, 
concentrated on shrimp production uh, because the, the water there is saline. But if you look at the northwest side of the country, uh, that's where the most of the carp production takes place. Uh, so, so diving deeper into the numbers, there's a, there's a breakdown in terms of species. If you move on to the next slide, um, you'll be able to see the different type of farming systems that are in place in Bangladesh. Um, thank you. Uh, so there has been a massive change in, in the uh, composition of, of the different uh, cultivation practices. Over the last decade, the concentration of, uh, of uh, farming systems that are under intensive, highly intensive or semi-intensive production have increased massively. Today, uh, highly intensive, intensive and semi-intensive production accounts for 77% of national production. Um, and if you, if you look, at the, look at the numbers, you'll see that it only accounts for 118,000 hectares, but due to the large productivity, they account for about 42% of the, of the uh, total production. Uh, there are also um, small, uh, uh, smaller farming systems, such as uh, the culture in seasonal water bodies, which happens often in the rainy seasons, and uh, there are also uh, other, other smaller cage culture and other uh, farming systems at play. If you move on to the next slide, um, this will give us an overview of the shrimp farming systems. So uh, the picture is quite the opposite when it comes to shrimp farming. So we haven't seen a lot of um, intensification in farming for the shrimp segment. Here, um, over 95% of the production comes from extensive polyculture farming. Uh, and, and the rest comes from semi-intensive monodon farming. Uh, so you'll note here that uh, there is no semi-intensive or intensive production of the Rosenbergi variety. Uh, so Rosenbergi variety is entirely uh, dependent on extensive production, uh, typically by the smallholder farmers that I just mentioned. Um, breaking down the numbers uh, in terms of shrimp production, 50% uh, of the national production comes from the monodon variety, which is locally known as Bagda. 42% comes from Rosenbergi, uh, locally known as Golda. And the remaining 8% is composed of uh, the Monoceros variety, locally called Horina, and uh, the Indicus variety, known as uh, locally as Chaka. Um, so, so moving on to uh, the, the uh, district uh, uh, segments, uh, there are, uh, the main uh, concentration is uh, focused on the Kulna and Shakira districts for Monodon. And the Bagirhat region accounts for most of the, uh, the Rosenbergi production. Uh, sorry, it's the last slide. I haven't finished that one. Um, and uh, stream production typically takes place in two cycles. There's a cycle before July and uh, the post July cycle, it usually caters to the uh, Christmas season demand for, for Western markets. And uh, a positive uh, aspect here is that the government has uh, developed a shrimp national action plan. Uh, and uh, with the support of the World Bank's loan program, the Department of Fisheries intends to expand the area under semi-intensive culture to 10,500 hectares in 2030. And depending on which species is cultivated, this can account for as much as 40 to 80,000 metric tons of additional shrimp production. Uh, and, and this expansion will partly be realized through uh, establishing more corporate farms and uh, small scale farmers are also uh, expected to support in this expansion and companies that have a history of working together with the development sector, such as uh, Fahim Seafood and NU Seafoods are expected to play an important role in this. Now, if you look at the uh, cost buildup for the uh, tilapia, the country tilapia segment, um, you will note that the, the largest cost uh, is, is going to uh, the feed uh, uh, in terms of production. It accounts for 28% of the retail price uh, and farmers margins account for 25% of uh, the retail price. Um, as a result, farmers receive around 73% of the final retail price in uh, the case of tilapia. The picture is somewhat similar for uh, the cost buildup in, for pangas. Um, move on. Uh, yeah. So feed costs are a slightly higher proportion uh, in, ter in terms of gas production, accounting for almost 50% of the retail price. Farmer margins, therefore, are a bit lower, but still hovers around that 20 to 25% mark. And farmers receive a, a handsome 76% of the final retail price. It's important to note here that when we're talking about cult uh, cultured pangas and cultured tilapia, these do not go through a processing uh, stage and are instead consumed 
directly by consumers through uh, the local wet markets. Now, if we move on to the shrimp uh, uh, sector cost buildup, you'll see a different picture. Most of the shrimp is destined for export. Uh, so you'll see a lot of role of uh, intermediaries here, particularly the processors. Um, the, the, it's a much more complex value chain. Uh, and you'll see here that uh, processing losses, which includes wastage, uh, think here in terms of you know, shelling the shrimp, beheading the shrimp, uh, these account for the largest expense in the value chain. Uh, in terms of production of shrimp, uh, the, the feed costs, once again, are, are the highest uh, input costs. Um, if you move on to the next slide, um, th this will give you an overview of what financing options are available to uh, value chain actors. Financing is highly informal, um, as you can imagine, for, for such a fragmented and, and small older farmer dominated uh, production scene. Um, uh, for farmers, they have uh, two options to lend money. Money lenders can take the form of the off taker, who generally provides interest free or low interest loans. And uh, they do so in, in the hopes of earning back that uh, lost um, interest in terms of post harvest commission. Or it could be local money lenders uh, or loan sharks who charge exorbitant rates. Sadly, not many farmers or intermediaries have access to formal bank loans. Uh, this is because banks typically uh, prefer financial records to vouch for loans, which the small producers and market intermediaries are not able to produce and, and they don't have access. But there have been some positive developments uh, to fill this uh, sort of demand for financing. Certain non-bank financial institutions, uh, IDLC finance to name one, have begun to work with market players and they're starting to provide short-term uh, working capital financing to vendors, unsecured uh, financing. Uh, so, so this is a positive development in this space. I will now give the floor to Matthias to give you an overview of the domestic and export markets of issues. Excellent, uh, Sai, thank you very much. So let's have a look at where the uh, production in Bangladesh is going to, as mentioned before, uh, the far majority of agriculture products remain in Bangladesh. And so only a very small percentage is, is destined for exports, um, uh, approximately less than 1% of the total fish produced. Uh, and then the majority is, is shrimp. So in total, um, less than 100,000 metric tons of shrimp, of, uh, sorry, of uh, fish products produced in Bangladesh is being exported. Uh, in total representing approximately uh, less than half a million, uh, half a billion US in export volume. Um, and again, uh, the far majority is, is shrimp. Um, if we look to the next, in the next slide, uh, to go a bit more in detail. Uh, um, so the majority of export products is, is shrimp and then especially monodon, uh, in which Bangladesh is the third largest exporting country in the world. Uh, challenges with, uh, with export markets uh, is that Bangladesh has a, a relatively fragmented industry uh, as, as seen in the uh, previous slides, uh, making also um, the market uh, less favorable for, for certification, uh, which is also restricting uh, to access export markets internationally. Um, so that is also one of the items we will address later on uh, in the in the bottlenecks and uh, opportunities assessments. Uh, but clearly, uh, uh, Bangladesh has a unique proposition, uh, being one of the largest monodon producers globally, uh, and this is considered as a, a very uh, high value product. However, um, Bangladeshi producers are not getting the value uh, which they deserve because it's often ending up in, in relatively low end food service markets in Europe. Um, if we have a, a bit more uh, detail into uh, where is where are fish products uh, ending up uh, in terms of exports, it's particularly China. Uh, so China is a large importer of Bangladeshi agriculture products uh, and a primarily uh, frozen fish, but also crab uh, and, and live fish. Um, so that's of interest. Uh, if we look to the shrimp markets, then we see that the far majority is, is going to the European Union. Uh, over 80% is ending up in markets such as the Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, uh, followed by a number of, of regional um, and then international markets such as the US, uh, Japan, and China. 
Um, we have seen that, that especially Chinese buyers have been increasingly looking at Bangladesh as a market for sourcing Mondon uh, shrimp. Uh, next to uh, the Rosenberg market, which is already uh, for, for a large extent ending up in, uh, in China. Um, so that is roughly um, uh, regarding the, the markets where, where produce is ending up. Again, uh, the far majority, uh, um, uh, over 99%, is domestically uh, consumed. However, uh, uh, if we look to export markets, then it's particularly shrimp and shrimp ending up in the European markets. That is, in summary, what we uh, can, um, can uh, distinguish from the Bangladeshi aqua markets. Um, we would surely like to address also uh, stakeholders in the market, for which I would like to give the floor to my colleague Zahed. Zahed, the floor is yours. Sure. Thank, thank you, Matthias. Uh, I'll very, very quickly take you through the, uh, through the overall ecosystem uh, of, the, of the aquaculture value chain. In terms of the regulator, the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock, particularly Department of Fisheries, is responsible for overall uh, 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 policy development and also overall management and conservation of the fish aquaculture sector. Apart from that, uh, DGDA is responsible particularly for uh, particularly for uh, for drugs related to the aquaculture sector and also the raw material ingredients required for producing the drugs. Uh, apart from that, Export Promotion Bureau is uh, mainly responsible for export of fish, uh, which includes uh, uh, fisheries and shrimp in general. Uh, and apart from that, ERD is responsible for uh, for for overall external aids coming uh, for, for the aquaculture sector. In terms of the other stakeholders, BFRI is responsible for, for research, uh, and also they are also responsible for capacity development. Apart from that, uh, Bangladesh Agriculture University, uh, Sherry Bangla Agriculture University are both involved with, with research in the aquaculture sector, and they have been playing a major role in the development of the aquaculture sector. In, the, in terms of the industries, Feed Association of Bangladesh, FIAP is uh, is one of the predominant players, which is uh, which is an association of feed manufacturers, uh, both for uh, for poultry and and aqua and also uh, livestock, and they have been working very closely to develop the uh, the sector and to structure this. Uh, apart from that, uh, Animal Health uh, Companies Association of Bangladesh are also responsible for for over the overall development of the of the sector in general. Uh, if I move on to the next slide. Yeah, uh, there are quite a few uh, players operating in the in the aqua sector. Just be uh, as as we know, Quality Feed is the largest player with fifteen percent market share, followed by Mega, Nourish, and ACI. Uh, if you can see the segregation in terms of market share, you'll see that the market is quite fragmented. Uh, but there are certain opportunities, just as Matthias and Saif were mentioning. The sector has tremendous growth opportunities due to growth of uh, of cultured. Uh, 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 aquaculture, uh, so aquaculture development. So there will be higher demand, increasingly higher demand for for fish feed uh, 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 in the in the near future. And this would mean that there will be further uh, consolidation uh, in the market in the coming days. Uh, in terms of, uh, if you move on to the next slide. In terms of the of the of the shrimp sector, we'll see that most of the production is happening in the southwestern region. Uh, which is the Kula division. Uh, majority of the farms are located in this division in Shatkira, Kula, Joshore area. Setara, Shaun, and Messrs Quest International are the top three players in terms of production. Uh, Setara has close to 101 uh, hectares of land, uh, cultiv uh, farming land, which has been devoted for, uh, for, for fisheries purpose. Shaun uh, Fishing and Messrs uh, Quest International are also uh, quite involved, and, and particularly Quest International, uh, uh, Shaun Fish International is is one of the importers of shrimp feed from uh, CP. Uh, if we move on to the next slide. Uh, Florine, yeah, thank you. Uh, if you look at the processors, uh, almost all the processors are located in the, uh, in the Kula region, which is due to the fact that most majority of the, uh, of the shrimp farms are located there. Uh, uh, we all know that, uh, we all know that uh, the sector hasn't been performing that well over the last four years due to some structural problems, but uh, there are quite a few players who are who are currently exporting. National Organic, uh, Jalalabad, and Modern Seafood are the are some of the largest players. And in terms of uh, in terms of certification, uh, CMart BD and Apex Food uh, these have AC certif certification. And some of the players also have presence in their 
in the exportable countries, for example, CMARC is a uh, CMARC has active presence in the UK market. The owners uh, have a significant presence in other businesses there as well. Uh, I will basically hand over uh, the floor to Matthias for taking us through the next uh, phase of the presentation. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you, uh, Sahat. Um, and we have reached the final chapter of our presentation, which I also would like to invite my, uh, my colleague Saif to add adjust if and where necessary. So uh, today we have outlined the agriculture industry in Bangladesh. Uh, we zoomed in into the different steps of the value chain, uh, starting with breeding, farming, feed, and then processing. Um, for, for now, we would like to outline our view on what are the main bottlenecks, but also the opportunities uh, for the market, uh, both from a, uh, a private sector, but also uh, from a public sector perspective. And finally, we also have a, an overall, uh, um, uh, overall uh, part, which is uh, covering the, the supply chain. So um, if we look to the, uh, the, current, um, the current challenges in, in the market, and then starting with, uh, with the first part of the value chain, breeding, uh, as mentioned, um, and there is quite some inbreeding uh, um, uh, in, in the market, both for freshwater fish as well as, as, well as for shrimp. Uh, resulting in relatively low technical performance. Um, and it also has an impact on farming, uh, where we have relatively low quality broodstock uh, uh, that already gives uh, farmers a, uh, uh, a bad start, let's say, uh, with their farming practices. Um, in combination with uh, relatively low uh, farming practices, uh, low level of biosecurity, uh, but also if you look to the technical uh, perspectives, that often results in, in disease outbreaks and, and a relatively low tech performance of farms, both in terms of shrimp as well as freshwater fish. Um, looking at the market for, for, for aqua feed, uh, as mentioned, um, uh, there is at current a relatively low level of, of commercial feed um, usage, um, but also feed manufacturers in, uh, in Bangladesh are dependent for a large extent on uh, raw material sourcing from overseas. Um, and resulting in, in price fluctuations, but also in consistent quality. And that also, again, has its effect on farming. Um, then if we look to processing, uh, we, we can uh, assess that Bangladesh has a, a, let's say a long value chain. It's fragmented. Uh, uh, we see quite some post-harvest losses uh, from the moment of harvest at the farm. Uh, due to absence or uh, let's say uh, relatively low developed infrastructure, uh, there is quite a substantial loss uh, from the moment of, of harvest at the farm up to uh, reaching processing facilities. Uh, then looking at the, at the overarching level at the supply chain, uh, um, we see that due to the fragmentation, uh, uh, there is, um, well, Let's say, for less extent, there, there is this uh, lack of traceability, uh, uh, resulting also uh, certification and therefore reaching export markets. Um, so these are a number of, of challenges uh, the market in Bangladesh is currently facing. Uh, there might be others, uh, but uh, we have categorized these into the five chapters we have been addressing in this, um, in this report. Matthias, can I just jump in here? Um, yeah, sorry, please, just, please just answer. Just, yeah. um, so I think I'll preempt some of the questions that we're seeing in the chat, uh, and that's in regards to processing and value addition. Um, right now, we're, we're reaching that stage where supply has caught up with demand and people are encouraging more and more value addition, especially as we have like a larger uh, in urban population. But from the processing sector, we, we've seen quite a, quite a number of issues, particularly in terms of unutilized capacity. Uh, if I give you an example of shrimp, there's only 15 to 20% uh, cap capacity utilization on a national level. And part of the reason being that uh, it's hard to source uh, you know, quality produce in the first place. Um, and, and that uh, relates to all of the breeding, farming and feed sector issues that we've just covered. But it, it also, um, it, it's also dependent on um, not being able to reach scale. What happens if you're not able to reach your full utilization is that pricing is much higher. So if you compare the, the price of processed foods, processed fish items in Bangladesh with uh, the international standards, you'd see that these are quite high. So what happens is that uh, we're not gaining as much traction for uh, processed fish and value-added fish products in the market as one would expect. 
Um, so addressing those uh, supply side bottlenecks uh, can um, nicely link up with, with uh, capacity digitization and bring the prices of value-added fish items down so that more people can access them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Saif. And uh, I think we can uh, move on to the next slides um, in which we address, uh, again, uh, within the categories mentioned, uh, what are the main opportunities uh, uh, to further improve, uh, further strengthening the agriculture sector in, in Bangladesh. Um, I think from our perspective, uh, there are opportunities for further improvement in virtually all steps of the value chain, uh, but we try to address a few examples and, and, and these uh, might be addressed uh, by, by either private sector parties, uh, uh, but maybe in combination with, uh, with public actors uh, uh, or in combination with, with uh, multiple parties. So looking at the breeding segment, uh, we, we think that there is a huge opportunity to improve quality fingering production. Um, and so both in shrimp as well as freshwater fish uh, species. Um, and that re uh, requires, uh, first of all, high quality genetics, uh, probably from overseas. It requires um, um, upgrading the, uh, the technical assistance levels. Uh, so so the, uh, the, the understanding of, of breeding purposes, uh, practices uh, but also technology is applied, uh, uh, such as uh, more uh, close, more controlled uh, breeding systems, uh, such as ROS. Um, if we look to the, the farming segment, uh, uh, which is the most fragmented part of the value chain, uh, we think that in, in overall, there's a huge opportunity to increase the, the, uh, the technical performance levels of farmers. Uh, and uh, probably this could be best uh, applied by introducing training programs. And again, there is already uh, uh, a lot of stakeholders in the market already offering technical assistance programs, uh, uh, but giving the, the enormous skill of this segment uh, with hundreds of thousands of farmers being active in both freshwater fish as well as shrimp production, uh, we think that uh, introducing uh, additional training programs would be of added value. Um, the feed segment, uh, well, we, we already mentioned uh, that we see there a market where we expect new parties, um, probably also from, uh, from other Asian markets to move into, um, and uh, where there is opportunities for improvement in terms of feed formulation, but also overall feed mill efficiencies. Um, in addition, and it is uh, an international trend, uh, we see an increased demand for alternative protein usage, yes? for example, from uh, uh, non-fish uh, sources, uh, such, as, uh, such as insects or other alternative protein sources. Uh, that is becoming more and more important um, uh, also in Asia, uh, and definitely also um, becoming more and more important in, in Bangladesh in the years ahead. Um, for the processing segment, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the lack of, of cold chain infrastructure uh, is, is, is uh, clear and there's also an opportunity to set up uh, a, a, a fine sec uh, a fine defined uh, network of, of cold chain facilities. Uh, and that results also with uh, the overall supply chain challenges uh, that uh, quality control and uh, reducing post harvest losses is a uh, opportunity to step into. Uh, uh, however, uh, uh, Saif, you already mentioned that uh, at current, there, there is still some, some vacancy in processing facilities. Uh, so we, um, uh, we should also clearly take that into account. Um, Saif, would you add anything about certain uh, opportunities uh, you have identified in the market? No, I think Matthias, you've covered it. I think I think there's a lot of opportunities in the processing segment, but uh, the supply side dynamics need to be adjusted in order to have an effect on, on the demand. And there's of course um, an export market that can also open up for uh, for the fisheries uh, fin fish products, which which Bangladesh has not tapped into yet. Uh, if if you look at the uh, export of fisheries, I think uh, shrimp accounts for for over eighty percent of that. So. So there's a lot, a uh, lot of uh, scope for uh, value addition and exports to, uh, in terms of fin fish. But there's also uh, an issue with price competitiveness there, uh, and that all, again relates to having quality feed at lower prices, having um, a, a good mortality rates in terms of, of post larva and seeds. So these all tie into the cost of production and dynamics. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Saif. 
Then uh, for the last part of our presentation, uh, we zoom in uh, a bit in more detail on the four segments in the value chain. Um, firstly, starting with, uh, with breeding. So uh, as mentioned, uh, uh, there is, uh, at, in the current situation, uh, Bangladeshi farmers uh, apply wild broodstock or uh, relatively low quality genetics uh, for both shrimp as fish production, uh, which has all kinds of, of uh, negative effects. And so um, in case of addressing opportunities, we would recommend to, um, uh, to, uh, to strengthen this, this part of the value chain, first of all, by introducing uh, uh, better quality genetics uh, from overseas uh, in combination with technical systems programs uh, uh, on improving the operations of, of broodstock and PL facilities, uh, and better controlled uh, uh, breeding facilities, uh, uh, but also in combination with, with uh, improved logistics, um, in order that farmers have a, uh, um, let's say, kickstart uh, with the genetics uh, together with increased uh, and improved feed production, uh, that at least that gives them the, uh, uh, the best possible uh, starting point for their farming practices. So if we look then to, to uh, the next chapter, the farming uh, chapter, um, there we, there will be a combination of, 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 uh, of items to address. Uh, so uh, in general, uh, we see that, that technical performance of shrimp, uh, of shrimp and freshwater fish uh, farmers in Bangladesh is, is lacking vis-a-vis uh, -vis their peers in, in other Southeast Asian and South Asian markets. And that could be overcome by a combination of, of uh, activities. Uh, prioritizing everything has to do with, with technical um, uh, management levels. So it's farm management, it's, it's improving biosecurity, um, uh, it would be uh, demonstrating best practices, yeah, uh, which have uh, been uh, effectively demonstrated in other Asian markets, uh, going towards a more controlled, yeah, could be semi-intensive production systems, allowing farmers to have a better grip on their, on their cultivation. Um, other items would be to, uh, to also address how we could uh, improve financing towards farmers. That could be done, for example, by grouping them in, in collective programs, uh, uh, but also working together with financial institutions to allow them to get um, the, the necessary uh, financing to do the investments in upgrading their facilities. Um, then with respect to feed, uh, again, probably the most professional part of the value chain in the agriculture sector in Bangladesh, uh, but still room for improvement, um, where it would be a combination of, of uh, improving the technical levels of, uh, of, of, of farming or feed production, um, as well as um, um, improving uh, laboratory capacity. In, in order to make sure that the feed is, is of constant quality, is safe, uh, and providing the, the best performance for farmers. And then finally, if we look to, uh, to the, uh, the, the post-harvest uh, uh, segment, uh, uh, we see that at current there's approximately 25% loss from the moment of, of, uh, of harvesting uh, uh, up to the, the produce coming into processing facilities. That could be overcome by improving uh, current cold chain logistics and infrastructure in Bangladesh. Um, and I think this is also an interesting opportunity for the Netherlands to tap into. Uh, the Netherlands is known for its, its strong capabilities in logistics. Uh, uh, also being a, a delta region such as Bangladesh, uh, uh, we have built up strong capabilities in, in agro logistics and supply chain. So definitely this is a segment where the Netherlands could add, uh, add a lot of value in, uh, in Bangladesh, both private sector as well as public sector parties. Um, and then uh, looking at these parties, uh, I think we in the Netherlands, we have developed strong capabilities where we bring together uh, um, expertise from different segments in the industry, uh, both from private sector as public sector, uh, where we could address uh, uh, the, um, the importance of, of uh, introducing better quality standards, uh, allowing Bangladesh to, um, to improve its positioning, uh, resulting in uh, also a better international export position, because uh, we have the opinion that that is also a, uh, a strong uh, policy goal uh, for, from Bangladeshi stakeholders, uh, 
uh, allowing the industry to, to further develop uh, and, and strengthen its export position vis-a-vis -vis other Asian peers. Um, Saif, do you have any, any further comments regarding... Yes, I, I do. Um, I've received a very, an excellent point from one of our participants, Dr. Wahab, uh, who's currently working on a wolfish project. And, and uh, he rightfully mentioned that we should also focus not only on uh, investing in value-added fish processing to, to uh, cater to the uh, demand from urban markets and export markets, but also look into increasing the consumption among the bottom of the pyramid population. Uh, as, you, as we all know that um, you know, fish is a very important source of nutrition, especially compared to its uh, alternative uh, products such as you know, poultry. Um, what happened with the, with the emergence of low-cost poultry uh, sector in Bangladesh, people are uh, taking in a large amount of protein intake from, uh, from poultry, uh, and we can uh, perhaps work towards uh, taking back uh, uh, some of that share and, and expanding the reach of these low-cost uh, but high-nutrition uh, high uh, fish, uh, such as uh, pangas and tilapia. These are, these are generally on a downward trend uh, due to the price prices and perception among people to go for you know, higher, higher value uh, fish, uh, fishes. But um, there's definitely room to expand uh, in terms of uh, consumption by, by, the, uh, by the lower income households. And, and there's a lot of ways to go about this. There could be you know, uh, awareness programs run jointly with the government and with industry associations so that people are, are once again uh, uh, interested in, in consuming fish and fish-based products. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Saif. And um, uh, hereby, uh, we have presented the results of the different uh, uh, steps in the value chain. I would shortly like to give the floor to His Excellency Ambassador uh, Rias Hamidullah, who joined us uh, from The Hague. Um, Your Excellency, Mr. Hamidullah, uh, thank you for being present during this presentation. Uh, before we go into the Q&A um, um, of this session, uh, I would like to give you the floor to share your views on, on, uh, uh, on this industry and the cooperation between the Netherlands and Bangladesh. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Matthias. Uh, very good to connect and see you once again after several months. Uh, dear friends from Netherlands and Bangladesh, uh, I'm sorry that uh, there was a bit of confusion and that's why I'm connecting at the fag end of the uh, conversation. Uh, and I, may, I might uh, flag some, some of the things which uh, I hope, I mean, I, I would assume that may not have been flagged as of the, this hour. Um, first of all, uh, thanks both to Lariv and uh, Light Castle for bringing uh, a pretty exhaustive work done. Uh, I say this because uh, having been having working in the in uh, the government has also having seen things uh, up close in the Netherlands for past several months as to how the ground is kind of uh, coming up. Um, so the study is pretty timely. It's also timely because tomorrow uh, the two foreign secretaries of Bangladesh and Netherlands are connecting in a very uh, crucial uh, foreign office consultation, which is key. Uh, including the conversations that you are having. Uh, so I'll skip uh, any prelude that I may have thought initially, but I'll go into some of the things which I would assume even at this stage might be useful for particularly for uh, Dutch friends. Um, first of all, Bang I mean, I was listening to past 15 minutes of Matthias and also Saif. My take is that please understand that Bangladesh market is absolutely uh, an open market uh, domestically and internationally. Why? My, it's essentially horizontal. The menu and elements that we are looking at still are horizontal. The vertical elements are not there. So that is where the opportunity. We may clamor that that's a pro problem, but that's so this vertical is a completely ground zero and that's where one can move very fast. Second, uh, we have 710 kilometers of coastline, a fascinating opportunity. What we are doing is essentially near coast that, uh, in terms of shrimp cultivation and fishing that's only happening. So marine fisheries, marine uh, uh, deep sea fishing including is a fascinating uh, space, uh, untapped as yet. Blackish water aquaculture is the USP for Bangladesh. Um, no need to detail. And also when I look at the Bangladesh Delta plan, uh, which I don't know uh, whether you'd have opportunity, as it goes into implementation from next year or so, 
that should also open up considerable opportunities which are not possible to fathom or sketch as at this stage. Um, in my view, uh, I think as might, you might have already heard and I can see uh, from uh, Professor Wahab being present here, the issue, I mean, the spaces of the disease control uh, are all there. I would not detail though. What uh, I would understand when I go to the stores and uh, they follow the discussions here in Netherlands is that as much as we introduce minimum use of antibiotics, growth hormones, and et cetera, improve or focus on uh, improvement of genetics, that's a fascinating opportunity. I may also have a slight different view in terms of focusing on tilapia and pangasius because that's a saturated market. But if you look at Bangladesh, where we have over 1,000 documented species of fish, many having therapeutic value, which are undocumented. Perhaps we may look at those just not going into the glut of markets, international market supply chain, and see how we can come up. There's a very interesting question I saw in the chat box about fish waste. Now, what is happening? Fish waste currently is a completely unorganized market people, because people, it's not, doesn't come uh, in, the, in the market in terms of value, but part of it is going to China, part to Japan. Organizing that market is a huge opportunity. When I look at salmon, for example, in Europe, now uh, Norwegians make one out of one kg of salmon, seven euro, but out of fish, I mean, the residual stuff, they make it around 22 euro per kilo. That's the fascinating thing. And also connecting with therapeutics. Uh, traceability, very interesting area, absolutely. That also connects with supply chain, essentially supply chain consolidation, reorganization, uh, building as well. And here, how much, how fast can we apply or use blockchain or artificial intelligence? I think that's the issue. Uh, and that's again, a fantastic space to uh, work on. Uh, eventually that would also impinge on the co costing part of it. Um, on uh, coastal aquaculture, I, I'm, I, 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 I'm given to understand, for example, if you look at Bangladesh, it's essentially a smallholder dominated uh, farming which is happening inland and marine. And uh, around a quarter million actually people are in smallholders. Now, how do we, more we can organize them, more we can make them shift from artisanal uh, fisheries, traditional and conservative methods. That's the opportunity, simply put. Um, and I think I'm essentially summarizing what you may have already heard. So I'll not, I'll not go into the, uh, the other things, but uh, what I said about the fish waste that would also connect with the end products, which again has not been mapped at, or, as well. Uh, shrimp, uh, at the moment, yes, market is largely driven to Bangladesh fish products in uh, in the west including in the eu and netherlands is known in terms of uh, shrimp uh, venami is being piloted right now uh, but i would underscore that if for example we look at the what is the usp of bangladesh the black tiger uh, which is very indigenous but the in huge market appreciation in terms of taste in terms of the size of it scalability of it if we can make the disease free bring in the fascinating Dutch processing technology and solutions, et cetera. I think that's where, and con make it conform to European EU standards. That's where sky is the limit, frankly, because then we can also avoid the glut or the existing competition cuts even Um And um, in, uh, finally, my final point would be that uh, uh, let's also look at the kind of rainbow coalition that we can stitch beneficially, gainfully, and in a mutually rewarding manner. What I'm saying is that while we have the artisanal fisheries, uh, fishermen, fisher community, but we also have the, uh, and also number of Bangladeshi entrepreneurs who are coming, some of the names I've heard, uh, but at the same time, let's also not ignore the universities uh, and also the, uh, meaning the academia, as also some of the, uh, let's say the philanthropic or not-for-profit organizations or community like World Fish and also something that, that I've worked for some, some time, Bangladesh Shrimp and Fish Foundation, there may be others as well, and bring them in. That's where the private sector or those who are uh, from business field engaging, you can gainfully and beneficially engage in. Because end of the day, to start with demonstration is key, what you may qualify as piloting. Once you demonstrate, I'm more than confident that uh, in, in, uh, in Bangladesh with the Dutch technology solutions innovation, which may initially be pricey, 
uh, things can be really turned around, not simply for Bangladesh market, but also beyond uh, uh, in, South, uh, in South Asia and also further. Uh, last example I may give, when I was in Sri Lanka for four years, one day someone came and he was saying that I'm exporting 1 million seedlings of sea bass to Bangladesh. I was struck. And then when I scratched, I could see the possibility or significant potential that can happen. Thank you, uh, Matthias. Uh, I'm sorry for connecting and making my points uh, a bit abruptly, but I thought that if at this connecting at the fag end, if these uh, kind of add any value to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, um, Ambassador Hamidullah, for um, uh, joining this, uh, this session and uh, elaborating on your views on the agriculture sector moving forward in, in Bangladesh. Um, for now, as a final point of this uh, webinar, we have roughly 15 minutes left for some Q&A. And um, you have been also kind to share some, um, some questions via the chat box. Uh, for any remaining chat, uh, questions you might have, please address these in the chat box. Um, we will select a few, and I will address these particularly to my colleagues, uh, Zahed and Saif in Bangladesh. Um, in case any questions will be remaining, please be so kind to share these via email. You could contact my colleague Florin Kramer. Uh, the same accounts for if you wish to have a copy of this uh, presentation or the, uh, the final report. Um, a, a subject already mentioned uh, by uh, Ambassador Hamidullah was what about uh, byproducts? Yeah, so. Uh, products which uh, come up from, from processing plants, for example, what is happening with these? Um, and then uh, uh, Ambassador Hamidullah already mentioned that her part is going to China, for example. Saif, you have been uh, also interviewing uh, lots of processing uh, parties in Bangladesh. Um, could you elaborate a bit on, on uh, your views on, on this market and what are the main opportunities uh, to create further value in Bangladesh? Uh, thank you, Matthias. Um, so we have covered uh, the prospect of, of waste, um, but it's important to note once again that uh, most of the sales in Bangladesh happen at wet markets, uh, and it's it's usually uh, you know whole fish uh, that that is sold in the, in the wet markets. So there isn't a lot of waste uh, that that is happening at the, at the processing level. Uh, whatever little does, um, some of it is, as per my understanding, is uh, used for. Uh, you know, fish meal in, uh, for further feed production. There is also a prevalence of using dry fish as, uh, as using as content of uh, aquafeed. Um, and uh, as, as uh, Dr. Riaz mentioned that uh, there, there's, there are also very, very uh, intrepid entrepreneurs who are working with this uh, product and, and seeking export market. We've seen that happen with the waste in the, in the cattle and the li uh, livestock segments. And it's encouraging to see growth there. But uh, I believe that plenty more could be done, uh, particularly in terms of exporting to the East Asian markets like China um, uh, to, as destinations for these uh, waste products. Uh, Zahid Bhai, do you have anything to add to this point? If not, then we uh, could go to the next question. Um, I saw a question also coming in uh, on uh, alternatives for, um, uh, for proteins. Uh, we know that in the agriculture sector, uh, there is a substantial uh, part of ingredients coming from other fishery sources. And uh, in recent years, there have been a lot of developments and, and ventures, and also capital influx into uh, alternatives for, for uh, fish meal, for example, uh, uh, coming from, from insects or alternative sources. Um, so we were wondering, uh, Saif, in your assessments in, uh, in recent months uh, with interviewing uh, parties in the agriculture value chain in Bangladesh, have, have you noticed any, um, any inquiries in this, in this part? Are there already parties venturing into alternatives for, for fish meal in, uh, for, for aqua feed in Bangladesh? Uh, uh, or is there an interest among aqua uh, feed millers? Uh Thanks for the question. Um, so this is a very interesting point. We, we have seen a lot of parties interested in exploring the al algae production locally, uh, but exploring it as a, an ingredient for fish feed production, we haven't heard a lot of interest in the sector, but certainly it's an upcoming and promising sector. Uh, so I believe there's a lot of uh, synergies to be had here. Um, first, in terms of 
uh, cost reduction. So as you know, most of the meat and bone meal that is used for feed production is imported. And uh, quite recently, there have been uh, negative coverage in the media in terms of uh, the quality of meat and bone meal that's being imported. Uh, there's some adulterants being included in that. And uh, both uh, end consumers and uh, these uh, fish uh, feed producers, millers, they've, they've also started to become wary of uh, when it comes to importing meat and bone meal. Uh, so, so there is certainly room to explore um, alternative options, especially if they can bring, um, you know, price improvements and, and certainly address the volatility issue that you've touched on, Matthias. Excellent. Uh, thank you, uh, Saif. Um, maybe as a final point before we, uh, we end up uh, with this webinar, uh, Sahet, um, as director of Light Castle, you might want to have a few uh, concluding words. Um, Sahet, I think Sahet is encountering some connectivity problems. Um, anyway, um, thank you all for uh, for joining this webinar. We see some uh, some further feedback and. and questions also ideas coming up into the uh, the chat box what we suggest is that uh, you you connect with us uh, uh, following this webinar uh, we will be able to exchange uh, further details uh, such as this this presentation but also the full report um, also a copy of this uh, this webinar uh, the recording will be uh, distributed via YouTube um, for now, I would like to, to thank, uh, first of all, the, uh, the Netherlands Embassy in Dhaka, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Harry Verwey and, and Bas Blau, uh, as well as the Netherlands Enterprise Agency for commissioning this, uh, this study uh, awarded to the Reef International and its uh, Bangladesh uh, affiliate Lightcastle Partners. Um, I would also like to thank uh, uh, Sahet and, and Saif for your contributions today. Um, we, we do hope that this, this study is a starting point and will inspire you to further engage in the Bangladeshi uh, agriculture sector. Uh, and perhaps uh, there will be follow-up discussions also on, on uh, further cooperations between the Netherlands and Bangladesh, uh, both from a, a private sector as public sector perspective. Um, um, thank you for joining today once more, and we'll be in touch.